may be sitting and turning your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 11, the chapter of the heroes of faith. Hebrews chapter 11, my subject, seven principles of winning faith. We've been doing a series I have on Wednesday nights, and I probably do more of them, but I preached on seven steps to a miracle, seven steps to kill your giant, and I thought about this morning. I'd like to talk about faith so you can release your faith. Amen. You know, there are certain steps you must take if you're going to be successful in life, and the number seven it is a number that has spiritual significance in the Bible. For example, there are seven days in the creation story, counting the seventh day on which the Lord rested. And Noah, he waited in the ark seven days before God sent the flood. Jesus cried seven times from the cross. In the book of Revelation, there are seven churches, there are seven golden candlesticks, there are seven stars and seven spirits of God. So, I want to talk to you today about your faith and how to use it. And many times when people are in trouble, that's when they become very diligent about the things of God. But I believe in preparing yourself before the battle. But I want to give you some good advice today. Get very diligent about your Christian life and your walk with God before you get in trouble. And then when the storms of life come, you will be ready because you will have already developed this thing I'm talking about, winning faith. Say it with me. Winning faith. Winning faith. Look at Hebrews 11 and 1. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, by faith, the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made out of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by the which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gift, and by it being dead, he yet speaketh. Look at verse 5. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. In other words, he was called away. <laughs> Hallelujah. And was not found because God had translated him. I love this part. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. In verse 6, But without faith it's impossible to please him. He that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. <clears throat> verse 8, Hebrews eleven eight. 8, By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should afterwards receive for an inheritance, he obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whether he went. There'll be some things you just have to do by faith, not knowing. My subject this morning, seven principles of winning faith. Let us pray. Father, thank you for the songs. Thank you for the testimonies. Thank you for the praises that have gone up. Now, Master, I pray that you will take these words, that they will find lodging in the hearts of your people, that faith will rise, and that great things will be accomplished by faith because faith pleases you. And when we Release our faith, you get involved in the equations of life. Bless your people, and the church said in Jesus' name, amen. amen. You know, it's wonderful to have people in the body of Christ which have special gifts of the Spirit, and God will send somebody at a time to just help you because you're a babe in Christ. But what God really wants us all to do is develop our faith. Thank God that there are people that we can go to, and God will use their faith, and God will use the special gifts of the Spirit to answer our prayers. But it's nothing like having your own faith. Look at Hebrews eleven six again. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and must believe that his reward of them that diligently seek him. Hallelujah. So the first principle of faith is that God, you must believe that God is. You must believe it. That's the very first principle of faith. You cannot see him, but you must believe in something you cannot see. You must believe in something you cannot touch. You must believe in something you cannot taste. You must believe in something you cannot smell, something you cannot hear, something you cannot contact with the five senses because God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. That's why church is so important. That's why staying in the spirit and being led of the spirit is so important because your faith will work for you. But you must believe that God is. You must believe in an invisible, unseen God. That's the very basis for faith. 
You must come to the God on the basis of nothing else, like Brother Ray said, except for his promises, what God has said. Look at Hebrews 11, 1. It says, now faith. Faith is always now. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now faith is an inference. It's the evidence of things not seen. So now faith. It's always now faith. What your faith did for something else, it won't do for this. It'll give you some principles to learn. And, and, but faith is always now. So use your faith. Now faith is. Some people think faith was. It was something Moses had. It was something that Abraham had. It was something the early church had. But let me tell you, faith is always now. And if you're born again, you have it. You, are, you already have it. You just got to grow it. Amen. You got to use it. Amen. For, for by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, so you have it. And I want you to understand that so you can grow it. Faith functions, faith moves, and faith moves mountains, and it does it now. You can change your world through faith because faith is always now. Jesus Christ is the great I am. He is not the great I was. And faith is always now, and you must believe that God is. That's very simple, isn't it? You see nothing, you feel nothing, but you believe simply because God said it. That is faith, my friends. You believe it because God, who cannot lie, he has made you a promise. Faith says it so. This is my definition. Faith says it so when it's not so, so it can be so because God said it so. And when you start using your faith, all of a sudden, God gets involved. That's the basis of faith. The word of God is the substance for your faith. And you believe in what God has promised, and it comes to pass. The second principle of winning faith is you must believe that God is a good God. God is a good God. Look at your hand at. Hebrews eleven six 6 got the first three principles in it. God is not the one who causes all your problems. God is not trying to teach you a lesson by oppressing you. God is the deliverer, not the oppressor. God does not put cancer on people. God does not cause disease. God does not put sickness on people to teach them anything. God teaches us through the word of God. That's where faith comes from. We understand faith through the Bible, through God's book. Jesus Christ, he said, I've come to do the Father's will. He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Jesus said, the works that I do, they're not my works. They're the works of him that sent me. So Jesus Christ is the visible image when he was here on this earth of God himself. Look at T Hebrews 10, 38. This is powerful right here. Now, it tells us how God, you want to know God's will? Here it is. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. God didn't send Jesus to do something that God didn't want done. He sent him to be the visible representation of himself so people could see him so a book called the bible could be written so people could watch god as he walked through the pages of the bible incarnate in jesus christ the word of god made flesh go and praise the lord hallelujah <laughs> glory to god so god does not cause your problem now i want to know how many fathers do we have in here wave at me wave at me yeah look at all those fathers in here now look at what jesus said in matthew 7 11 Look at that. He said, if you being evil or just ordinary people, if you know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? That's pretty simple, isn't it? So to please God and develop winning faith, you must believe that God is a good God. Now, I want to show you something else. I want you to see that God is interested in every aspect of your life. God is concerned about your physical well-being. And he's also concerned about your spiritual well-being. Look at Luke eleven thirteen. 13. Here's the same principle. If you think being evil or just an ordinary person, if you know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? 
So in Matthew 7 and 11, Jesus said that God will give good things unto his children. Mark 11, 13, Jesus said God will give the Holy Spirit to his church. Jesus earned the right, and you have a right if you're born again to be filled with the Holy Ghost and the fire from heaven because it's a gift. Just like the faith that was given to you, the Holy Spirit, he is a gift. Don't get mixed up on religion You'll have to go through the process of sanctification and all of that. And I preach that, and I believe that. I had a real experience. But if you've got faith, praise God, you can skip some things because God will, when you got saved, you got separated under God. And that's what sanctification is. And you might get a whole lot more than somebody else got because you had Bible knowledge. You might just step right into the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But guess what? You got saved, and you got sanctified, and you got filled with the Holy Ghost. Go on, praise God. Hallelujah. Don't put God in a box. He'll jump out of your box. He's God and he can do anything he wants to, anytime he wants to, for anybody he wants to do it for. Hallelujah. Third principle of faith, winning faith. You must believe that God rewards those that diligently seek him. So don't get, wait till you get a problem to start diligently seeking God. You must know that God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Hallelujah. Don't just seek him when you're in trouble. Seek him before you get in trouble. Don't say, I got to go to church Sunday morning and Sunday night, and I got to go to church Wednesday night, and I'm going to have to go to Friday night prayer meeting because I'm in trouble and something showed up on the x-ray. No, be diligent and seek God before your troubles come. And when trouble shows up, guess what? You'll be suited up with the whole armor of God, and you will be battle ready. Hallelujah. Now, how can you be so sure of that, Pastor? Well, put Hebrews 11, 6 up there. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. He that cometh to God must believe that he is. And must believe that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hallelujah. See, you cannot even receive a miracle without a problem. So if your situation seems impossible, just know this. With God, all things are possible. Brother Robert, sitting in church today, healed of cancer, hallelujah. He said, I'm not going to use God like a spare tire anymore. I've learned some things. God is a good God. And if I look at him, look at him. Go and praise God for that testimony and other people. Sister Joanne, praise God. Hers hadn't shown up yet, but guess what? It's on the way. It's called restoration. Glory. It might have shown up. We just haven't realized it yet. Glory to God. So turn your faith loose, believe that God is, believe that God is a good God, and believe that God is rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You know, many people, they give up far too early. Instead of persevering in their faith, they get discouraged. They get all bent out of shape. That's understandable when we have struggled with a problem for a long, long time. And we say things like, well, I've had this sickness for a long time. I guess I'll never get well. Don't get hung by your tongue. People say, my marriage has been dry and dull for years. Why should I expect it to change now? Why don't you buy some flowers? Why don't you take him on a date? And ladies, why don't you just caress him and show him hallelujah? I, I still got uh, the ability to relight the flame. I mean, you loved it when you got married. There was a fire burning then. Keep the fire burning, praise God. I said, keep the fire burning. He that findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor. That's shouting territory. I said, you attain favor of the Lord. Oh, praise God. I'm so glad I'm married. I, I, I'm so glad I don't have to go looking. Woo! I found her. <laughs> I mean, I found the one. I don't talk about it a whole lot, but let me tell you. I've got the one that God purposed for my life. I didn't even know I'd be a pastor at the time. But you know what God gave me? He gave me a pastor's wife. Don't you love Sister Teresa? Go and praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, I've been working for this company 20 years, and, and I guess I'll never get that promotion. Well, don't talk yourself out of it. Use your faith. Promotion coming neither from the east nor from the west nor from the south. God is the judge. He puts down one. He sets up another. So if you're discouraged and life deals you some lemons, then make some lemonade. Hallelujah. Put a little sugar in there or something. Hallelujah to sweeten it. Glory to God. God is a great God. You must believe that God is and that God 
is rewarder. You know, David is one of my favorite Bible characters. And before he came, became the king of Israel, they came home one day to Ziglag. You're talking about problems. The whole city had been burned to the ground. They'd been out fighting the Amalekites, and these were men of war. I, I, I know what men of war are like, and they're hard, and they get callous, and, and, and they, sometimes if they're not careful, you, you don't have compassion and feelings. War will do that to you. But these men, they were real warriors. They were David's mighty men, his inner circle. They came home to Ziglag, and the whole city had been destroyed, had been burned to the ground. And, and when, when that happened, these mighty men, Oh, I think about this a lot. These men that had seen war and blood and guts and body parts severed, these men, they wept till they could weep no more. I mean, they were broken. And then they got mad with David. David, the champion. David, the one that had brought the anointing to them. David, the great fierce leader of Israel, ultimately. But he wasn't at this time. He just left the cave of Ziglag, um, the cave of Adullam, rather than that. Ziglag has been burned to the ground. And his men were ready to stone him to death. And the Bible says, David, this is what you have to do. Everything's gone. His financial empire, his cows, his herds, his wives, everything is gone. His home. He slipped away, and he talked to the Lord his God. And he said, God, shall I pursue? God said, pursue. And you shall recover all. Who am I talking to? I don't know what your situation is, but I promise you one thing. If you will pursue him, if you will seek him, you will find him, and you will recover all. You look in a man that was broken. I mean, everything was broken. But I began to seek him. And he's restored more than I ever imagined. God is a good God. And he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Don't come and do something once in a while. Don't, don't give once in a while. Don't pray once in a while. Don't read your Bible once in a while. Make it a habit. Diligently seek him. Uh, you, anybody can, can have a spirit, oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. No, people know you by the life you live. They know your character. They know what you stand for. They know whether you'll give up in the storms and the battles of life or you'll just stand Stand and watch God move. Go and praise the Lord. Haven't you been there when God has brought you through so many battles? Hallelujah. But David pursued, and they recovered all. They believed what it cannot see, what it cannot feel, what it does not have. The fourth principle of winning faith is faith always has a good report. Put Hebrews 11, 2 up there. I, I love this. By it, by faith. The elders obtain a good report. Do you have a good report when you're going through the battles? Or are you just going to cry the blues? Oh, I've got this problem, i got that one. Talk to your problems about God. I, I, I go on Facebook, and, and people tell everything about themselves. Praise God. Go to a prayer meeting and get somebody and get on your knees with the church and people of like precious faith. Someone that won't gossip all over the world and tell your problem. Somebody that will take it to heart. People of like precious faith that will pray for you. Glory to God. And watch God work. I tell you, we got testimonies in this place. Go on, praise the Lord. Faith always has a good report. By faith, the elders obtained a good report. And if you're walking in faith and living in faith, if you're talking faith, let me tell you, you're just going to have a good report. Now, what the writer of Hebrews is saying there, he's talking about the 12 spies that were to go into the promised land. Ten had a bad report, and only two had a good report. Joshua and Caleb, they had a good report. They were the only one that made it into the promised land. Joshua and Caleb, they had a good report, and faith always has a good report. Faith does not deny the facts. Faith always demands a change. Let me say that again. Faith does not deny the facts. Facts are facts. But praise God, the fact is, with things that are impossible with man, they're not impossible with God. Turn your faith loose and let God change the facts. Hallelujah. Glory to God. People of faith, they have to watch their mouth. <laughs> Ah, ah, ah. Woo, that's a mouthful. 
People of faith, they have to watch their mouth. Amen. They have a good report. Faith talks peace when there is no peace. Faith talks healing when there's sickness and disease all around. Faith talks prosperity when you can't pay your bills. Faith talks the language of God. Faith speaks the word of God. It talks God's promises. Faith always has a good report. Hallelujah. A person filled with faith, praise God. They have problems, but they have faith. Doesn't mean you don't have any problems. But you don't focus on the problem. Because you have faith and you focus on God and on the promises of God. You don't even look at the situation. Looking unto Jesus Christ, the author and the finish of our faith. He gave me this faith. I quoted it earlier. And if I got it and if I feed it the word of God, my Lord and my God, the author and the finish of my faith. He'll just polish that thing off, step into the situation, praise God, shake himself, and he's a heavyweight. When he does, praise God, he defeats the enemy for Stand and see the salvation of the Lord. Use your faith. Talk faith. You have it. Speak it out in Jesus' name. Look at Hebrews 11, 4. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice. So the fifth principle of winning faith is faith offers a more excellent sacrifice people who never sacrifice anything they don't really have much faith oh they can talk faith but faith always offers a more excellent sacrifice people of faith come to church when others don't there are people who will give god everything see there are some people that will give god something but they won't give god everything so when you get into the storms of life and you want to use your faith, if you haven't given God everything, how can you expect everything from God? Well, God is a good God, and he, he rewards those that diligently seek him. So he'll probably send somebody by like Brother Philip or, you know, a good layman, Brother Ray or Brother Scala, Brother Clark, just to pick out a few of them that can pray. And, and he'll operate one of his gifts through them. Brother, Brother Philip, was, they were down at Royal Ranger Camp. And there was a guy who was the only one who could fix the drag line. And he woke up and he had gout in his feet and could hardly walk. They said, come over here. We're going to pray the prayer of faith for you. Am I telling it right, brother? They prayed for him. He stomped his feet on the ground, praised God, was healed instantly, and went and fixed that drag line. I tell you, faith pleases God. And God will send somebody to help you. Go and praise the Lord. Faith, people, please God. Now, I want to show you something. I had never seen this when God revealed this to me. Romans 4, 16. I want you to look at this. Because, for by grace are you saved through faith. That not of yourself is the gift of God. Therefore, it is a faith that it might be by grace. Do you see that? I've never heard a sermon on that. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace. God said, if I can get your faith to working, if I can just get you to believe that I'm a good God, if I can just get you to believe that I am and that I'm in control, that the Lord God omnipotent reign it. God said, if I can get you that far, he said, your faith works by grace. That's the only way it works. Faith brought you into this thing, faith will win the victories. That's what I want you to see. Therefore, it is by faith that it might be grace to the end of the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to that which is of the law, but also that which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. If you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and as according to the promise. So you in the family. Ha, <laughs> Romans 4, 16 has a lesson for us all. Therefore, it is a faith that it might be by grace. The word says it is a faith that it might be by grace. You see that? God is omnipotent. It is, God is active. And God in his mercy, when you start using your faith, God comes in with grace. Do you see that? And God supplies that need. I couldn't get my car fixed. I didn't have the money. But I've been paying my tithe. And Pastor, will you pray for me? And we put it on the altar here and prayed for you, Sister Scott. And the money showed up, praise God. Because God says, faith, when you work it, grace will show up 
and supply that need. Hallelujah. I don't, I don't know how to make it any more simple than that. It takes faith that it might be by grace, and it cannot be otherwise. Do you see that? Take Abraham and Sarah. Look at Romans 4, 17. God said, I made thee a father of many nations, before whom he believed even God who quickened the dead, or makes alive the dead, and calleth those things that be not as though they were. Here's Sarah. Her body's dead. Abraham, his body's dead. At 75, he produced a son called Ishmael. That was of the flesh. But now, she's all bent over. He's all bent over. He's looking at her, and from a natural standpoint, he says, no way. Listen to me now. Naturally, no way. I say it again. Naturally, no way. An impossibility. But the Bible says he considered not his own body now dead, neither the deadness of Sarah's womb. He was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded of what he had promised, he was able also to perform. God said, according to that which is spoken, so shall thy seed be. He didn't have a seed from a natural standpoint. His seed was the word of God. He believed God, and Isaac showed up. And because he's the child of the promise, we're sitting in church today, born again by God's spirit. Go on, praise the Lord. Because of a man's faith. Hallelujah. Glory to God. My Lord, Abraham's faith pleased God. The seventh principle of faith, of winning faith, is faith obeys. Pastor Ricky, he's a preacher. He knows it's hard to get three points in. I got seven. That's <laughs> faith, brother. He told me the first one. He said, you think you can get all seven of them in? I said, I'm going to try real hard. Well, this is the third time. Let me see if I'm doing. I started late now, so we might just have supper here tonight. <laughs> we got a few minutes to do this. The seventh principle of winning faith is faith obeys. Look at this, Hebrews 11, 8. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go into a place which he should have to receive for an inheritance, he obeyed, and he went out not knowing where he went. If you had all the answers, if you have revelation on every situation in life, if you can do it, guess what? You don't need faith for that. But if you can't do it, you need faith. And God gave you a gift. You know, I remember when God called me out of the nightclubs and God called me out of the world of sin. I didn't know where he was taking me to. I, I didn't know he was going to make me a preacher. I'd heard him call me all my life. But, man, I probably, I'm thinking I've just disqualified myself because I've been out in the world too long. No, I didn't disqualify myself. I began to diligently seek him. And he who knows the thought and intent of the heart, he whose eyes watch the sparrow fall to the ground, he who knows the house upon your head, he looks at your heart. And when he sees a heart that reaches for him, when people will close the door in your face, God says, that's all right, I am the door. And I see your heart, and I'll open the door, and I'll do things through you that I won't even do through others because I see something in you. See, that's what God is looking for. He's looking for someone that will diligently seek him. He's looking for someone who will give it all, not part of it. Some people, they'll give something to God, but they won't give everything to God. And I had to make a choice as a young man when I had utterly failed Will I believe God? Will I believe that God can take me? My sister told me. She said, "Why well, you've lost everything. How can you be so happy? <laughs> I said, no, I've not lost everything. I've got Jesus. And the spirit of prophecy came over me. I'd been filled with the Holy Ghost when she told me that. The spirit of prophecy come over me. I said, you watch God. I said, you watch God put my life back together. I said, God has all of me now. And see, if you'll give God all of you, you won't even have to seek for position in this world. You, you won't have to try to climb a corporate ladder. Ain't that right, brother? All you do is show up on time. You know, people are watching you. And when you show up late, people know it. And when you show up on time... People know it. 
I, I've been in management. So I guess I still am somewhat. <laughs> I'm trying to manage myself mostly. <laughs> Hallelujah. But managers, don't they watch them, Brother Clark? Don't you want somebody you can count on? He's retired now. Amen. The, the Wilsons had powerful positions, making plenty of money. God blessed them. Even took them beyond what they were qualified to do educationally. But they had some on-the-job training and a God who saw faith. <laughs> and God just decided, I see something I like, and I'm going to bless them. And he's made them a blessing to us. They're such a blessing to this church. So many of you, you're such a blessing to this church, Pastor Ricky. But ever since I have been saved, when God has spoken to me, I have obeyed, not knowing. So you don't have to know as long as God knows. I don't know what the future holds, but I promise you this, I do know who holds the future. Let us stand. Take those seven principles of winning faith. I, I put the scriptures. Go home and read that. And feed your faith. Let it rise in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no, no one else like you. There is no one else like you. For you are great. You do miracles so great. Hallelujah. There is no one else like you. If you are not saved, you need to rededicate your life, please come. The presence of God is so powerful here right now. Brother Scala, a miracle. In the jaws of death in a coma for six weeks, here he is being restored to his full health. We serve a good God. Look at him on his knees. On his knees. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. He that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is reward of them that diligently seek him. Let us come to the altar. Pastor Rick. For you are great. We love you, Lord. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. You are great. You do miracles Come in close so everybody so can great. get in. Come talk to your God. Tell him, Lord, I'm growing. I want my faith to become a giant slaying faith. Hallelujah. See, the whole purpose of faith is for you to win your victories and have others win their victories. You deserve.